Hey, what's up guys? This is Ashnox. In this video, I'm going to showcase Charles and review him at the same time. Let's do it up, baby. Let me quickly talk about Charles' skills and memory imprint before I move on to my gear and my stats and what kind of build you can be running Charles on. So his skill, three attack buff for two turns for the whole team, defense buff for himself. The fewer the targets, the enemies, the more damage this skill three will do the uh, soul burn extends the duration of the buff by one turn only a four turn cooldown after skill up very very strong considering it deals damage and it gives the attack buff to the whole team as well this skill number two has a hundred percent chance to remove all the targets buff of course if it doesn't get resisted and also uh, you will deal more damage the more buffs that you have on your charles very cool and skill one has attack break 60% chance for one turn. Very, very good for PvE content. Uh, quite helpful in PvP if you can land it. And you got a 35% chance to combo skill one and to skill number two. The chance doubles up if the target has a buff and the exclusive equipment allows uh, the skill one to have a, an additional 10% chance to uh, you know trigger into the skill too which is doubled if the target has a buff it's insane and the memory imprint we've got for the team beside himself crit chance and for himself crit chance very very good value out of that memory imprint for this showcase i have my charles built on a speed set and a crit set because i'm going first but if you're building your charles slow for a defense setup then you want him on a counter set and immunity set Make him slow, get a bunch of attack, crit crit damage on him. You don't need speed, just pump that health and get some defense as well. Make him tanky and also he's gonna pack a punch with these, uh, you know, skill 1 and 2, skill 2 potentially. Very, very cancerous, so much damage, super annoying when you're fighting one on defense. You can't, like, completely ignore him because if you attack someone else, Elbrus rituals are triggers, and if you attack him, the counter set triggers. Very annoying to deal with. So I have him on, you know, 3,200 attack, crit damage almost 300%, uh, and over 200 speed. I want him to give the attack buff for my teammates, and I'm gonna be putting Portrait of the Saviors on him to squeeze that extra bit of damage later on in the video. With this team, we are actually activating Ludwig. So we're providing him with attack buff from Charles and we are providing him with uh, the invin invincibility with uh, Crimson Armin. And he's going to be able to deal a ton of damage and he is built slow and that's going to be okay even though the enemy team is going to be applying defense buff. Let's just see what kind of damage we're able to dish out. So if we get an Elbrus uh, Ritual Sword trigger, we can actually, there we go, we can build souls. And here we go. We're building enough souls to get that 10 souls to actually soul burn the skill 3 of Ludwig. So that's a pretty cool thing to do here. And uh, let's see what kind of damage we're able to dish out. He's built, you know, slow high attack and crit damage. And uh, I'm curious about... Yeah, I mean... Ludwig hits really, really hard. It, it's, it's actually quite crazy how hard he hits. And... Uh, the barrier that Ludwig has provided himself is uh, very helpful. And you can see Charles just like skill 1 into skill 2, man. He's just crazy. He's just crazy. And uh, when he's built, you know, with high offensive power... Oh, so we, we lost uh, Ludwig. But it's okay because we have Charles. And we're going to go with the skill 1 uh, and to the skill number 2. It's just beautiful. And of course, he lands a crit on a fire hero. <sighs> Look at how much damage Charles actually dealt. It, like, he's on par with Ludwig, which penetrates defense with skill 3. Uh, it's it's pretty insane, but he was able to trigger skill 1 and to skill 2 quite a few times, and that definitely pushed his damage. Okay, so we're gonna get that attack buff, and then we'll try to deal as much damage as possible against this team so we have arbiter vildred going next with eliha's knife charles is able to activate eliha's knife for any thief so you can use that uh to your advantage and you're going to be able to deal that extra bit of damage and penetrate up to 20 percent of their defense because of that so look at the damage here it's actually pretty solid uh it, yeah their team took a quite a beating and now we have uh 
you know, watch her Shuri to sort of like clean up. Unfortunately, I have to go with skill too because, you know, two of their damage dealers are so close to uh, going down. I don't even have this thing uh, fully skilled up. And here, well, we're going to be taking some damage. Uh, yeah, uh, Arbiter is going to be the one cleaning up here. And uh, we got Watcher Shuri still alive, so that's pretty cool. But yes, Charles is, if you can keep him in the battle, you know, he's able to... Uh, deal that extra bit of damage because of the uh, Elbrus Ritual Sword, assuming you have that on him. And that's just like a tremendous amount of support that he can provide for your team throughout the battle. There are, of course, downsides to using a hero like Charles because you're dealing damage, right? And you're putting the attack buff on the team. Well, if you are triggering like a, a Water Origin on a Soul Weaver, they could potentially cut so that could be very dangerous. And uh, you have to watch out for that. Uh, maybe an Alina is against you. And uh, if you're attacking the whole team, you know, she's going to be getting that uh, combat Juness boost. And then she's going to go again. You can see here, Charles, uh, he's going here. Skill one into the skill number two. Unfortunately, he missed on both of the attacks. And uh, well, Arbiter came back here. Doesn't have the attack buff anymore. But. Uh, yeah, there's different ways to build your Charles. If you feel like he goes down too quick, well, of course, you want to make him more uh, bulky. But in my case, I'm going first. I just want to unload as much damage as possible and make it happen as fast as possible. You can see here the damage of Charles, you know, is uh, very close to Arbiter Vildred, considering Arbiter Vildred actually went twice. And uh, he had the uh, Eliha's knife triggered as well. Let's test out the team here. We got three threats uh, against us. We're gonna have uh, ML Ken counter attack here. So let's see what kind of damage he's able to deal against us. We have defense buff on Charles and he's definitely gonna deal much less damage because of that. And now I have Watcher Shuri to just take out uh, martial artist Ken. So we don't have to worry about him anymore because he's actually uh, quite annoying when he's paired with a knight, uh, you know, Multiple layers of protection, you cannot one-shot him, and then he just replenishes his health because of Sigurd's sight. And here, Kron will, yeah, he was able to take out Charles. That's why, like, you want to, like, build your Charles more tanky. And here we could, oh, he, he stealthed. Like, we cannot land a uh, stun with our Judith here. So that's, uh, that's a problem, right? But uh, he did lose his uh, immunity, so we could potentially land, uh, you know, decrease hit chance against him which would definitely uh, help quite a bit so here I'm, uh, I'm thinking just soul burn and uh, let's see what kind of damage okay we did land the decreased hit chance so that's good and uh, let's chip at the health of uh, remnant violet and uh, finally oh my god it is so close it's so close but it's arbiter vildred and he's overpowered but yeah, Charles just enables so many different things and just the fact that he deals damage by giving attack buff is huge. In this battle, we have to worry about two things. We have the end that provides the anti-crit buff for their team. There's also Falcon or Clary with the skill 3 that can provoke someone and remove their buffs. So we'll see who she actually targets. And uh, let's see here. We are setting up Ludwig if we can get, you know, a, a, a counter attack from uh, the Elbrus Ritual Sword trigger on Charles. We're going to be able to, uh, that's good that it's Crimson Armin. And I was thinking she was she would go for a Crimson Armin too. Uh, yeah, if we can build just a bit more soul, we're going to be able to have uh, Ludwig, you know, use his uh, skill number three soul burn. So that's going to be huge. And we didn't get... We didn't get it to trigger. So here, let's hope we can get some crits to actually land. I could have used skill 2 and delayed the skill 3 uh, longer. But I'm opting for going for the damage. And yeah, it didn't do too well. Huh? It didn't do too well. This is really unfortunate. And now uh, I cannot land a stun. They have, uh, you know, debuff immunity. They're going to be able to stabilize. And I'm hoping that I'm actually able to... Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm hoping that I can keep my Ludwig in play longer and we're able here to take the buffs off of uh, the end, which is actually huge because I'd like to focus on her 
because she is a big problem. She's sustaining, you know, uh, their team. And I don't want that. I don't want that at all. So let's see here. Ludwig is extremely slow. And they're all going, like, before he can go a second time. It's quite ridiculous. And, like, even now, I thought he would go, but no. And still, still he's not going. So we're going to be using uh, him to take out uh, the end. I'd like to take out Clurry here. Nice skill one into skill two. That's what you can expect out of your Charles. When the target, you know, is... Uh, target is buffed you've got double the chance of skill one you know uh triggering the skill two uh the combo is just a very very powerful and here we didn't land a stun uh you know judith is just a four star hero and charles oh my god yep he's not tanking up so that's what happens now ludwig though uh we might be able to pull it off I, i'm not quite sure here it's it's he's too slow you know he's just gonna end up going down because Apocalypse Ravi, uh, she actually, uh, well, she might bring someone else soon enough. Here, I'd like to, oh god, I'd like to boost combat shrewdness and, uh, and potentially stun. Yep, okay, I got him. He was about to use skill number three, and we're actually going here. Okay, so there's still hope. There is still hope. It's not over. And uh, she's actually going to attack Judith because uh, Judith's at the lowest health threshold and here we can actually use the skill too and now we're just waiting like this and we can soul burn the skill three is that going to be enough without the attack buff well let's find out and it's not enough it was so close though it was so close with the barrier we might survive oh it was it was pretty close and we're able to win this one. That was pretty nice. I'm definitely enjoying this team quite a bit, man. So let's just uh, do it up here. Let's see what kind of damage we're able to do with Charles. Uh, is he going to, uh, you know, trigger Elbrus Ritual Sword? And is skill one going to trigger uh, and to skill number two and it's great that crimson armin is actually going after charles so we can get the uh, invincibility on charles up until the point he can go uh, a second time so that's real good and uh let's see what kind of damage ladwig is able to deal and uh, we didn't oh we might be able to trigger ah uh, we didn't get the elbrus to trigger so we didn't have we didn't have enough souls but i'm still going here I i'd like to uh see what kind of damage we're able to dish out with the skill three without the soul burn and oh that was a uh, pretty respectable damage right there and uh, they do have uh you know debuff immunity which is definitely unfortunate now crow uh he he's going to use the horse and i'm not quite sure if i can skill skill two and take him out so i'm gonna gamble skill one and here we go we're taking him out and that's what you can do when the target has a buff you can gamble these things and it's actually quite fun to uh you know uh try to to uh see if you get lucky right and if you do manage to be really lucky and if you have him on a counter set with the elbrus ritual sword that kind of stuff just happens like continuously throughout the battle it's really annoying but you might not have too much speed on him if you're going that route because you know you you probably want him with more health and some defense as well but yeah that's the end of this battle we already have an attack buffer sinful angelica and the team i just want to see the damage of charles he is on portrait of the saviors he is going to activate eliha's knife for arbiter vildred let's see what kind of damage we're able to do we might be taking out arbiter vildred in one tap here and looks like we uh, didn't land a crit on him. He probably uh, evaded the attack. And here we can deal so much damage because of Ilya's knife. Uh, it's, it's great. Any thief can wear that artifact and you can just do a ton of extra damage by penetrating their defense by up to 20% if it's fully uh, enhanced. And here we can clean up very quick, very easy. But what about the breakdown? Like, how much damage was he able to do? 
You can see that Charles dealt more damage than Arbiter Vildred because he went first, so he dealt full damage to their whole team. Let us know what you guys think about Charles in the comment section. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe if you still haven't. I'm Astronox, good luck with all you do. Peace out for now.